This is a sequel to my basic editing video, and uh, I get a lot of same questions over and over, it seems like, and so I just want to address those right now. Hopefully this stuff will make you work a little more efficiently. All right, uh, first off is people say, why is this choppy? Um, and it's choppy because it's trying to uh, render every frame at full quality. So what I would suggest doing if, if it's running kind of uh, choppy for you is drop this right down to quarter and uh, it's going to play a lot smoother. Now it's not going to look as good in here but that doesn't matter because when you go to export it it's going to look great. You want it to play as smooth as you can because you want to be able to chop it up the way you want. So if I press play, I'm on a laptop right now so it's going to be kind of choppy anyways uh, but it runs a little bit smoother. Um, if this isn't on fit, I would leave it on fit. You can go to 100% quality and you can kind of see the detail if you need to, but for the most part, leave it on fit. If you need a bigger window, you can always grab, um, you know, right here in the corner and, you know, move things around to get the size that you want. All right. Uh, next thing would be, uh, one thing I get a lot of is people saying, hey, you know, it, it got dark on me. Well, it's probably when you try moving stuff around. So for example, let's say I want to move this clip out, um, or let's say move all these clips. You can click and drag and select multiple clips. Um, and sometimes I have people, you know, they, they, they grab something like, hey, it went dark, but it, it's right here, I don't understand. Or it's just a little bit dark. Well, that's because you grab this opacity uh, line right here. You're gonna leave that at 100. Um, you, you may wanna have it dim out, and I, and I can show you what that does is, Let's say I put this little keyframe here, and if you can't see that, you just have to go to show keyframes or opacity handles. Either one works fine. But I'm going to press that little button right there, and go down a little farther. Press that again. That's not a keyframe, and I'm going to drop that one down. So what that is right there is, and is that a scrub right here? You can see I'm scrubbing right here. So what that does is changing the opacity to go down to zero percent. So that's one way you can kind of like fade out. Or maybe it's not so much fading out. See now, if this was on top, and slide this one under it. You can see it's not so much that it's uh, getting darker; it's just fading to the other one. See, so you can you can do transitions by you know changing the opacity. Uh, you can do the same with the audio as well. Uh, so I'm not I'm not going to want any of that. So I'm just going to undo that until I have it back to where I want. All right. Um, so if it gets dim, it might be that right there. Uh, but you can actually, like I said, you can kind of click and drag and you can move multiple clips at once, which is really useful. Or if you want to get rid of that space, you can right click and do ripple delete, which is also very handy. Um, now let's say uh, you have a title slide or it can be video, it doesn't really matter. Uh, one question I get is how do you rotate things? So if you click on it once and it brings up video effects right here, if you look, drop down motion, they have rotation in here, scale and position, uh, very useful. So uh, let's say I want to have it come here and then maybe rotate or let's go to the beginning of it uh, You just click that little stopwatch right there. It brings up my keyframes and maybe I want it to like Spin around or just kind of rotate a little bit to the right um, So now what it does is you know see it's, it rotates as I scrub through this um, You may need to just rotate your video a little bit to get it lined up. It kind of depends on what you're going for uh, but that's what you can do. Um, and you can actually have it go, you can make it spin this way too. If I get right there, I can just keep going and going. And now it's going to, when I go to play this, it's not going to be very smooth, but I can try. You can see that's one way you can get it to spin. You want it to spin a certain amount. And then see here, the keyframe stops, so then it stays at that position right there. If I wanted to rotate again, I'd have to put another keyframe in. Or I can grab this one and just move it down to the end. Maybe I want it to spin the entire time uh, while this plays through. Yeah, I just want it to spin. All right. Okay, cool. Um, next thing would be like fast forwarding and stuff like that. So I'm gonna grab another clip right here. Um, you can grab whatever you like though. And if you look at this clip, all it is, is it starts to look at this little chalk drawing with some text and then up into the sky about that fast. Maybe that's too fast, maybe it's too slow. Well, I can actually, uh, they have time remapping right here, or I can just go to speed duration, and I could say, you know what, I really want this to slow down, I'm gonna go 50%, and I hit okay. Now, notice this clip will actually get twice as long, in fact, though, too. So now that I watch this, it'll run, it's, it's kind of choppy, though. Um, if you want it to be really smooth, you're gonna have to bring it into After Effects, um, but that does slow it down, it doesn't look too bad. If anything's slower than 50%, it's not gonna look very good. 
Um, you can also record at a higher frame rate too, that, that'd be fine. Um, or I can make it faster, or for example, like I showed you, speed duration, I can change this to reverse speed. And maybe I want it to go really fast, so I want a 200 in reverse. And I hit OK, and it's going to make the clip a lot shorter. But now it's going to start from the lake and then go to the, go to the chalk drawing. So there it is, and then back to the chalk drawing, and, and it's kind of choppy, but you get the idea. All right, great. Um, when I move this clip back and forth, um, you know, if I want it to actually go right to the spot right here, I want to make sure snapping's on. See, when I try to actually line that up, it's not, I don't know if I'm quite exact, or like trying to get it to line up right there. You know, I might have a small gap or something like that. The way you fix that is this little button right here. It says snap. It's snapping. You can also just hit S to turn it on and off so you can see it highlighting and not. And what that enables you to do is when you move something, it kind of just kind of clicks into spot. So let's say I want to move it right to that red line. It kind of jumps right to that spot if snapping's on. See, I turn it, I had it off. But if I turn it on, it like goes right to that edge. And that's really useful because otherwise you're going to have these small little areas where you overlapped or you, uh, you're not quite touching and then you get a little bit of black in there instead, uh, which you probably don't want. Um, Alright, I guess the next video I'm going to kind of go over the notes, some of the next tools right here. Um, but for the most part, you're going to use your selection tool right here. Um, some people you know, like to cut things with the razor blade, um, but I don't find that really useful. I mean, if, as long as you're on the selected clip and you just hit Control k it cuts it in that spot, which I find really useful. Alright, hope, hopefully these little tips help you out. Um, check out my other videos, subscribe. And uh, have fun. Good luck.